Mirror's Edge, to put it simply, is a hell of a speed game. With a quirky physics engine, rushed development, and an insane momentum system, Mirror's Edge contains a complex library of both obvious and obscure speed tech that is constantly abused in the speedrun. This video will attempt to log and explain every speed tech in Mirror's Edge, with a focus on teaching beginners. If you're interested in learning the game, or just wanting to pick up a few tricks for your next casual playthrough, then definitely click around this video and try some stuff out. Be sure to check the description for timestamps and a link to the Google Doc containing all the info in this video. I hope you enjoy! Side Jump Boost When holding a left or right direction key and jumping, the player will perform a side jump. This side jump instantly brings Faith near max running speed. If a player turns in the direction they side jump and continues running by holding forward, they can get to max speed instantly, bypassing Faith's normal 5 second run up time. Bunny Hop Faith gains about 4 km per hour worth of speed from jumping. As long as players are careful not to lose momentum, constantly jumping can be used to maintain faster speed than simply running. In homage to older source speedruns, we call this bunny hopping. Jumping up slopes it's faster to jump up slopes than to simply run up them. Stairs in Mirror's Edge act as slopes, so we almost always jump up stairs in the speedrun. Use Glitch When the Interact key, or the Use key, is pressed twice in one frame, buttons can be activated during other animations. These animations include jumping, sliding, punching, and side jumping, among others. Doing this Use Glitch skips the button pressing animation entirely. It's worth noting that the use glitch can be performed through walls as well. The use glitch can also skip valve turning animations, but valves are almost entirely skipped in many any percent speedruns. It's also worth noting that the use glitch can cause Faith to get stuck in a special player state if the player does too many use inputs per second, where Faith cannot jump or interact with objects, thus blocking level progression. Also, certain elevators and doors can be affected by the use glitch in unique ways. On these actors, doing more inputs per second will cause the actor to move more quickly. This causes elevators to move more quickly up or down, and doors to open quicker, saving time. Elevator Clip By jump turning into the back corner of an elevator and performing the use glitch, players can activate the elevator button well in midair. If performed correctly, players will then clip through the ceiling of the moving elevator. Since elevators act as loading screens, players can walk into areas early while they load. This can also be performed with a rotating coil jump, rather than a jump turn. On elevators with a delay between when the button is pressed and when the elevator starts moving, players simply wait before the elevator starts moving to jump turn into the corner. Avoiding Door Barge The default door barge animation and the door kick animation are both slow, and a player cannot quickly side jump boost out of these animations. Therefore, it is faster to either slide kick the door, crouch punch the door, or in most cases, jump and drop kick the door. If the player gets a gun, it is preferable to shoot the door open while running. Fast Door Kick on very specific doors, by carefully starting a dropkick further away from a door and hitting the door with the very end of the dropkick animation, players can open a door with little to no loss of momentum. Kick Fall Height Reset After a wall run kick animation, a floor is put under Faith for one frame, even if in midair. This one frame floor resets fall distance, allowing players to survive farther falls. It's worth noting that the longer a player runs on the wall, the longer the fall they can survive. Kick Glitch. This is the heart and soul of Mirror's Edge speedrunning. We can perform any standing action during the one frame window that the wall run kick creates. This includes jumping. Runners bind a scroll direction to jump to consistently hit the jump in this one frame window. When done successfully, this trick, known as the Kick Glitch, is used to clear large distances extremely fast. Kick Glitch Side Jump. Similarly, we can also side jump boost on this one frame window. This gives players an opportunity to quickly change direction after a wall run kick. Speedy Kick Glitch If the player starts a wall run on the same frame that Faith steps up onto a tiny ledge, the wall run will gain extra speed. If a Kick Glitch is done almost immediately after the speedy wall run, the player will perform a speedy Kick Glitch. 
This speedy kick glitch can only be done in certain locations, but goes faster and further than a normal kick glitch. Roll Fall Height Reset Like the wall run kick, roll animations also have a one frame floor at the end of the animation. This is often used to reset fall height, allowing players to survive higher falls. Barbed Wire Jump Like the roll and the wall run kick, the animation after hitting barbed wire also has a one frame floor at the end. However, by jumping into the barbed wire with a drop kick, we can shorten the animation. This prevents us from losing height, allowing us just enough height to jump on top of the barbed wire. Because the top of many barbed wires give no damage when coiled onto, we can then jump off the top and continue without dying. Avoiding rolls. This one's pretty simple. Rolling is explained to be fast in the tutorial for the game, but speedrunners should avoid it whenever possible because it kills your momentum. The player does this by routing to avoid rolls, or by using fall height cancelling animations, like the wall run kick or purposeful barbed wire damage. Wall Boost By binding a mouse direction to jump, players can jump on and off walls extremely quickly. By performing this wall boost technique, players can go much faster than normal. The sharper the angle the player looks into the wall, the more speed they gain. Wall boosts can be done right next to a wall, or the player can jump into the wall from a small distance. Kick Glitch Chain In Mirror's Edge, players don't lose momentum until they touch solid ground. This means that a player can chain kick glitches together between walls to achieve huge speeds. It's worth noting that wall boosts can also be incorporated into these kick glitch chains to gain speed more quickly. Wall boost chain. Similar to a kick glitch chain, players can chain two, three, or in extremely rare cases, four or more wall boosts together without touching the ground to chain momentum and achieve very high speeds. This momentum will be maintained until a player touches solid ground. A player can also get two wall boosts on the same wall if the collision of the wall sticks out or caves in. This kind of double wall boost is most commonly done with the first wall boost on wall and the second wall boost on a door frame. Ground Kick Glitch If a player starts a wall run while right against a wall, and then instantly kicks after beginning this wall run, the player will lose very little height during the wall run kick animation. Therefore, by maintaining their height, they will not touch any solid ground underneath them during and after the wall run kick. Thus, they will maintain their momentum like a normal kick glitch, even if over solid ground. We call these ground kick glitches. However, ground kick glitches can only be performed when kick glitching from a wall on the player's right side. This is because the right wall run kick animation is slightly shorter than the left wall run kick animation. On a left wall, the longer animation makes it impossible to maintain enough height after the wall run kick to avoid touching solid ground. Side jump wall boost. While in the side jump animation, the player will not be able to wall boost. Therefore, if close to a wall, the player can use their time in the side jump animation to look sharply into the wall while also maintaining all forward momentum because of the side jump. This causes an extremely fast wall boost if done correctly. Fast Vault Speed Preservation Any momentum achieved through kick glitch chains can be maintained through fast vault animations. If the player jumps the first frame after the fast vault, the speed is further maintained through the bunny hop. Springboard Speed Preservation Like the Fast Vault, speed can be partially maintained through springboards as well. However, the springboard will always slow the player down a little bit. Super Springboard To make springboarding easier, developers put special magnets near springboards that automatically springboard the player if they jump while running toward one. By wall boosting into a springboard, getting a first frame jump after the wall boost, and allowing the springboard magnet to push us backwards a little, players can maintain momentum from the wall boost into the springboard. Although touching solid ground for one frame should cancel our momentum, according to all the previous rules, developer placed springboard magnets have a special effect that cancels that. To properly maintain speed, players must repress the forward key at some point during the springboard animation. Hidden Springboards There are certain bits of collision that developers intended to be springboards. These developer-intended springboards, usually highlighted red, launch faith higher than a normal jump. However, certain bits of collision are at just the right heights to be used as springboards despite seemingly not being developer intended. We call these hidden springboards, and they can be used to skip certain bits of the level. 
Fast Zip Lines The more speed a player has before jumping into a zip line, the quicker they will hit max speed on that zip line. Their momentum is basically carried over onto the zip line. Strang On extremely rare occasions, momentum can be maintained through first frame bunny hops, even when touching solid ground. Based on a humorous misspelling of the word strange, these strang bunny hops are a bit of a mystery. Strangs may be the game confusing faith between a standing and a non-standing state, allowing us to preserve momentum even after touching solid ground. Strangs are almost exclusively done after a kickflip jump or a wall run. We have a well-founded hypothesis that mid-air shifts of momentum increase the probability that a strang will occur. Because of this, strangs typically occur in three scenarios. After a ledger wall run pulled me toward a wall, when Faith lands on a bed of collision on the ground, or after Faith gets pushed by a slope in midair. The technique is wildly inconsistent. A single strang could take more than an hour to achieve. As such, any strang bunny hop you see in speedruns are either luck or the result of much grinding. Air steering. While a player is in the air after a kick glitch, or just in the air in general, they can look left or right while holding the forward key to steer very slightly in either direction. Extended Wall Climb Similar to a vault or climb, wall climbs can only occur when holding the forward key. By jumping and delaying their press of the forward key slightly, players can start their wall climb further up on the wall and climb greater heights. Wall Climb Sidestep and Infinite Wall Climbs if a side jump is performed during a wall climb, Faith performs a different animation where she jumps to the side from the wall. From this wall climb side jump, Faith can be turned into a ledge to grab higher ledges than intended. Alternatively, the player can also wall run after this wall climb side jump. From the wall run, players can perform a turn jump. This can be looped infinitely to climb certain parallel walls or just used to get higher up. Sliding Wall Climb Wall Boost By jumping near parallel to a wall, then quickly turning the camera near perpendicular to the wall in midair, players can achieve a wall climb that retains some horizontal momentum. Since Faith cannot wall climb unless the player is holding the forward key, players can strategically choose when to press the forward key in order to start the wall climb at the desired time. From this sliding wall climb, the player has a brief window to side jump from the wall climb and gain even more horizontal momentum. If the player has set up the angle of the sliding wall climb correctly by clicking forward at the correct time and assuming the wall continues long enough, Faith can perform a wall boost from this wall climb sidestep, adding on to the speed previously achieved and allowing for a glitchless approved technique that rivals the movement power of the kick glitch. Extended Sliding Wall Climbs If a wall in Mirror's Edge seems barely too high to climb, Faith will get a little extra boost at the end of her wall climb to barely reach the top. The precise wall height is what allows Faith to achieve what is called an extended wall climb. If a player begins a sliding wall climb at the edge of one of these walls that is the precise height, Faith will continue the animation of getting an extended wall climb in midair, rather than quickly dropping out of the animation, while also retaining the horizontal momentum of a sliding wall climb. At the end of this extended sliding wall climb animation, the player has an opportunity to wall climb sidestep to further cover more distance. This technique is used to cross large gaps in a glitchless approved manner. Speed Vault Manipulation At any given fence, Faith can only vault if three conditions are met. One, the player is looking at the fence. Two, the player is holding the forward key. And three, the player has at least some upward momentum. Different vaulting animations are performed depending on the height Faith is at relative to the fence when all three conditions are met. Certain vaulting animations are faster than others, so players can manipulate which vault animation they get in two ways. One, by waiting to hold the forward key until Faith is at the correct height for a fast vault, or two, by turning the camera toward the fence when Faith is at the correct height. This same concept also applies to climbs. Faith is able to do a slow climb, a slow vault, and a fast vault with no horizontal momentum. However, to do a fast climb, Faith must also have at least some momentum in any horizontal direction. If Faith does not have enough horizontal momentum, but still achieves the correct height for a fast climb, the player will instead perform a ledge snap. Ledge snaps are most commonly used to climb up onto a building after a well-timed wall climb sidestep. 
Wall Run Climb During the beginning frames of a wall run, Faith maintains some upward momentum. Let's assume Faith is wall running on a wall with a ledge just above her on that same wall. If the player drops off the wall run with a key press with a bit of remaining upward momentum while also holding the board key, Faith can climb up to that same ledge of the building she was wall running on. Hint Climb The hint key normally points players toward an objective. If the key is held during an animation, like a wall climb turn, the hint key will snap the camera toward the objective immediately after the animation ends. When strategically used, players can wall climb turn, hold the hint key during the turn, and then be looking in their desired direction immediately out of the jump. Since the player is at the correct height, holding the forward key, and has horizontal momentum, which in this case is in the opposite direction, the player still gets the fast vault on that wall when they otherwise could not. Glide if a player jumps at a rail at a specific height, but they let go of W right before they jump, they will glide upward off the rail and gain extra height, instead of vaulting the rail as normal. This can also be done at even more precise heights, while optionally holding W, to achieve sharp shifts in directional momentum in midair without losing speed. Celeste Quick Kill By backing Celeste up against a ledge, or by attacking her during one of her attack animations, she will be unable to roll away from our first slide kick, as she's usually programmed to do. Then, by performing two standing punches, one crouch punch, and one more standing punch, we've achieved five hits on Celeste. Since the speedrun is on easy difficulty, we can then disarm Celeste after five hits. This is the fastest way to kill Celeste. Clipping. In Mirror's Edge, Faith can clip through solid objects while performing slow vault and slow climb animations as she has no collision during either of these animations. This allows Faith to climb through certain extremely narrow gaps, even if there is a ceiling or rail above her. New Left Clip When performing a slow climb animation on certain ledges, Faith can be randomly launched slowly upwards until the animation ends. Since Faith has no collision during slow climb animations, the player can clip through anything in their path while being launched upwards. This phenomenon, named after the player who discovered it, is called a new left clip. We know very little about what causes it, and we only know that turning on VSync in the game's video settings helps to increase the probability it will occur. Beamer When climbing a wall, the player will continue climbing the wall even if there's a bit of collision sticking out. But if a player performs a wall climb sidestep on the same frame that they hit the collision, they will be beamed away perpendicular to the wall at high speeds. We call this trick a beamer. The player can also perform beamers by doing a wall climb turn on the same frame they hit the collision. However, by jumping out of the wall climb turn, players will reset their momentum to normal. This can be used to strategically stop the beamer when necessary. Beamers can also be performed by wall climb sidestepping on the same frame the player slides over collision on the wall during a sliding wall climb. Fast Sniper Drop By hitting the disarm key to drop a sniper rifle just before firing it, players will simultaneously shoot and drop the rifle, saving a couple of seconds, since there's normally a delay after shooting the rifle before you can drop it. Checkpoint Quitting and Reloading There are two types of checkpoints in Mirror's Edge. Hard checkpoints reload you back when you die, and they also act as save points that you can load back into if you quit the game and come back. Soft checkpoints, on the other hand, only save your progress upon death, and are not reloaded into if you quit and come back. By going out of bounds, players can hit hard checkpoints early. If the player quickly quits and reloads the story mode after hitting a hard checkpoint, the level is loaded correctly, allowing for a sequence break and progression. Death Abuse By jumping into a hard or soft checkpoint and dying, Faith will respawn there. This can get Faith to places, usually downward, faster than trying to get there alive. Tab Buffering In some out-of-bound skips, players must pause their game for the level to load in before they can continue. Instead of pause buffering by using the escape key on a normal keyboard, players use the objective screen, bound to tab on the keyboard by default, to more quickly buffer, since the objective screen appears and disappears faster than the pause menu, which has a little animation. Neutral Kick Fall Cancelling the neutral kick animation can be used to override and cancel hard fall animations, allowing for players to begin running again quickly. Doing a neutral kick is usually faster than rolling as well. 
Door Drop Kick Fall Cancelling Similar to how the neutral kick can override the hard fall animation, beginning a drop kick animation while aiming at a kickable door will also cancel and skip the hard fall animation. Drop Kick Death Cancels Certain services have special properties developers programmed in. These services, including sliding slopes, allow the player to survive falls that would otherwise kill them. However, if a player falls for too long, they will enter the long fall animation and die anyway. Although, a player can delay the long fall animation by beginning a drop kick just before the long fall animation starts, allowing them to fall just a little bit longer and hit the slope to land on the special surface and survive. This same death cancelling can also be done with pipes and ladders. Bounce. On extremely rare occasions, certain bits of collision will send Faith just flying. This has only been recorded a handful of times and hasn't ever been used in a speedrun. Print screen strats. In certain areas, you can delay the level loading by straining your PC by holding the print screen button. Although ridiculous, this can be used to jump into unloaded areas that normally load too quickly for skips. Loading screen speed buffering. By pressing the forward key, usually after the loading icon goes away, but before the right screen fades during a load into a level, you can get Faith to load into the level at max speed. This trick is somewhat hardware dependent, as slower PCs have a longer white screen before the level fully loads, allowing for a larger window to press forward. Okay, well that's everything I can think of. If I did miss anything, or if new strats are discovered, or if new theories come up, or whatever, I'll add links in the description. Speaking of the description, some acknowledgements are in order. Special thanks to the Rixer for largely inspiring my video format with a similar video he made for Ratchet & Clank. Go check out that video if you're looking for other insane speed games with cool momentum systems. Also, shoutouts to Blue Mage for his initial video on his Strang theory. Go check that out if you're interested in the mysterious Strang. If you liked the music in this video, I credited all of that stuff in the description as well. And if you actually made it this far, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. I'm BBGN. Peace out.